All right, guys, so I'm going to show you how to create the digital tessellation in the sketchbook app. So you can zoom in and out using your mouse if you have the little toggle uh, roll. You can also zoom in and out using your fingers. Um, make sure also that your angle is at a uh, zero degree, so that way it's not angled in any way. Okay, so for this tutorial, you guys are going to learn a lot about using layers, Okay, this layer editor. If you don't have the layer editor open, you can click on the little window box at the top toolbar and you can click on your layer editor to get your layer editor like toolbox. Also make sure that you have your brush editor and your color editor. Where you place them on your screen doesn't matter. Um, I try to keep my layers on one side and then everything else, colors, brushes, all that stuff on the left side. All right, so we're going to start off with our pencil. Make sure you have black selected. I'm going to make my thickness just a little bit thicker so that way we can see. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to draw a shape. We're going to draw a square as best as we can. Try to make it as equal as you can get it on all sides. Okay. Once we have that square created, now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to treat this as if it's our puzzle piece that we're cutting physically, but we're doing it digitally. So I'm going to lock my layer. I'm going to click on that little lock button to lock the layer so that way if I make any mistakes, I don't accidentally erase my square. Now I'm going to add a second layer above my square and making sure that that second layer is selected, like it has a little blue outline around it, I'm going to draw a line from the top left corner of my square down to the bottom left corner of my square. Now I know it sounds kind of weird, but you're going to draw a line that kind of goes from corner to corner and kind of makes its way into the square. I'm also going to turn on my little like stabilizing tool so that way if I draw like crooked and wiggly with my mouse that it kind of like stabilizes it and smooths out that line. Okay. You can draw whatever line you want. It can be any kind of line um, since you're not physically cutting this out and it smooths it out for you. I mean, you can make it as like super fancy and super complicated as you want, but I kind of just drew one a little simple, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to act as though if I'm making this physically, I have to cut off this piece and move it to the right. So I want it to almost seem and appear like I'm cutting it off and moving it to the right side. So when you click on your layer and you hold your mouse down, you hold your click down, you get these little options. The one at the top left corner is your duplicate. It recreates that layer without you having to redraw it. So I just duplicated the layer, which creates a second one. We can't see it because it's right directly on top of itself. So if I use the little move tool, I can click and move and drag that piece over to the right side, almost as if I'm cutting that piece and pasting it to the right, which is what you would do if you're making this physically. Okay, check mark that you like it, <clears throat> and now you have your two sides, your two pieces. All right, but it still doesn't look like we've cut this piece off, so I'm going to lock my sides, the layers of my sides, so that way if I make a mistake, I don't make a mistake on those and accidentally erase it. I'm going to unlock my square layer, and then on my square layer, okay, I'm going to make sure I select my eraser, my hard eraser so it erases it completely but make sure also that you are on the layer of your square and we're going to erase these two lines so that it appears like I am erasing the square that's why it tells me that my transparency is, is not working because I have it locked okay so unlock it make sure you're on your square layer and then of course erase that line as carefully as you can okay if you have the touch screen if it's easier for you you can zoom in and out to erase these lines so that way you can get a real nice real nice erase but it should work just like this okay once you've erased it I like to merge my lines and so when you click on your layer and, and drag down um, it lets you merge it so now instead of having three layers I now have one okay so now what I have to do now that I've made my puzzle piece I'm going to draw inside my puzzle piece a picture and I just kind of drew whatever. It kind of looked to me like the side of a dog's like face, like a cartoon dog. So I just kind of drew the little dog face in there. Okay, Just a quick little sketch drawing just so I can give you guys an example. Okay, 
when we do this for your project, take your time, right? I locked my layer again so that way I don't make a mistake and accidentally erase something. Created a new layer and now I'm just going to start coloring. So I like to use the airbrush because it's kind of see-through, kind of not. And so it allows me to kind of like see where it is that I'm coloring, like a guideline, okay? Don't worry about it being messy or not messy. Um, I'll show you how to fix that here in just a minute. But add as much color as you can, okay? Once you've got the whole thing colored, what you're going to do is you're going to click, double click, and drag the layer with your colors down below the layer of your drawing so that way the drawing now sits on top. So think of it almost like a layer of cake, right? If you have the top layer on the top, we're going to see the top, but we're not going to see what's on the bottom. So we have to kind of drag our layers around so that we can organize them. Okay. Now what I'm going to do while I'm inside my color layer, since I can see my lines, is I'm going to take my hard eraser again, and I'm going to carefully kind of erase around the edges, the, the coloring that's on the outside. And so for this, I did kind of zoom in. I did kind of take my time and erase it, made some mistakes. If you make some mistakes, just, just use your undo button. Okay. But once you've got it done, you can kind of go back through, zoom in and out, fix up the color, make it look a little bit nicer, nicer and neater. Okay, and that's what I'm doing here. Just kind of making it look a little more neat. Okay. All right, so once we've got it colored, now we have our full tessellation piece. I've got it colored in, I've got it drawn. I'm going to do what I did with the other ones, and I'm just going to merge this layer so that it's one single layer and not multiple layers. Okay. So now we have our tessellation piece. And this is a single cut tessellation. We only cut from one side, moved it to the other side. You can do other tessellations where you do multiple cuts. So from left to right, you'll move a piece. You can also do from top to bottom. Okay. I went ahead and I saved my work at this point just in case because I know the sketchbook app sometimes it likes to crash and it just turns off on its own. So just in case I saved it. <clears throat> Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our little tessellation piece. I used my select tool, but notice it kind of drew over it. So make sure you're not using the lasso select tool, but you're using the square select tool. Okay, and once you've selected all of it, you're going to click on your keyboard, control C, so that way it tells you that it's been copied to your clipboard. You'll add that new layer, open up the new layer, and then click Control V to paste it. We want, again, we won't be able to see it because it's pasted right on top of itself. We have to drag it and move it over to the side. Okay, and always remember when you're trying to move something over to the side, you have to use that little top button with the four little arrows pointing up, down, left, and right to move it. Okay. So a little trick because I kind of want to make my little dog faces look different, each piece that I have. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm on that second layer. Up at the top, those three rings, the button with the three rings, this kind of helps you adjust the color of that layer without actually having to recolor everything. So this is kind of like a game changer for some of you that like to fool around and mess around with different colors. In fact, as you change it, as you move that little toggle along the like rainbow line that's up there at the top, it actually adjusts all the colors from your original color based on how much red, how much yellow, how much green, how much blue, purple, and all that that it has in it. So it kind of just adjusts it for you so that way you don't have to adjust it yourself. Okay, so I kind of like the way it looked when it was purple. <laughs> purple and blue, my favorite colors. All right, so I'm going to stick with the purple and blue. So once you're done, you can just click on done, and now you have two different color dogs. You don't have to waste time coloring it all over again. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to copy the first dog because I want my dog to almost look like a checkerboard. Brown dog, purple dog, brown dog, purple dog, brown dog, purple dog. So what I'm going to do, I had an extra layer. I don't know what happened there, but I'm going to erase that extra layer. I'm going to go back to my first layer with my little brown dog, and I'm going to copy, control C, and then paste it again into a new layer. And so basically, every time you paste something, it'll automatically create its own layer for you. So I pasted it again, the little brown dog. I moved him over to the right, 
lined them up with the purple dog. So now I have the brown purple. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the purple layer. Okay. In fact, the purple one, instead of copy pasting, I'm going to click and hold my mouse and actually duplicate. And so if you saw it, it's the, the two little pieces of paper. I'm going to duplicate that layer, move that layer up to the top, select my little move button, and then move that purple dog down below the brown dog on that second line. Okay, so I'll show you again. I'm going to duplicate the brown, click, hold, duplicate, and it duplicates the layer. Drag, double click, drag the layer up to the top, click on the move button, move my little dog down to where his piece belongs, click on the green check mark that that's where I want it, and then do it one last time with the purple. Okay, so again, click on the layer, duplicate, double click, drag it up, and then I'm going to select my move button, and I'm going to move my little dog piece into the slot that I want it to be. Okay? And you can do this multiple times for the tutorial. I only did it these six times, but you can do it more times, multiple times. Fill up that space as much as possible. Okay? And again, because I like to eliminate my layers and not have so many layers on my paper or on my like digital paper, I actually like click and do and merge those those layers so that it's one piece. So now instead of having six different layers of a dog face, I have one layer with six dog faces. Okay. And here I'm just moving all of those pieces together to about the center of my little area. And then I'm going to change the background to black just so that way it kind of looks finished. Okay, but if you need to, if you want to, you can add more, you can make it bigger, you can fill up that whole piece, you can change the size of your little dogs. Okay, but once you're finished, click on your menu and then click export. You have to click export so that way it saves your picture as a JPEG image. But that's how you make a translation tessellation using Sketchbook Autodesk.